we come to the study of logic proper, and in this part of the course we're going to be dealing with what is called propositional logic. And I'm going to introduce propositional calculus rather formally, and I'm going to first introduce the symbols that we will be using. Now first of all, we're going to use the capital letters of the English alphabet, A, B, C, D, and so on and so forth. And if the 26 letters of the alphabet aren't sufficient, then we can augment them by the use of subscripts. We might uh, come to A1, A2, and so on and so forth. So we're going to have, in the so far as we can use infinitely many uh, integral subscripts, we are going to have at our disposal an infinite number of these uppercase letters. We're also going to use two additional symbols. We will use this symbol, which is rather like a reversed L tilted on its side, and we are going to use this symbol. I wish my writing were a little bit better. If it were a little bit better, that would be seen to be a straight line, an arrow. And on top of all of those symbols, we are going to use two others. And those are simply the normal parentheses. So these are the symbols we're going to be using in our propositional calculus. And in a short while, we'll define by reference to these symbols some others which we'll use as a form of shorthand. Now let's just name these symbols. We are going to call these symbols sentence letters. Attach no meaning to these at the moment. They simply terms, expressions which denote these symbols. We'll call these sentence letters. We'll call these connectives and we will perversely term these parentheses. Now I'm going to define something which is often termed a well-formed formula, often abbreviated to WFF, which I will use and I will call a WIF. Now, a well-formed formula is an expression in our language, the symbols of which are set out up here, the language of propositional logic, and we're going to define what constitutes a WIF, what we say inductively. Remember from the video describing the principle of mathematical induction, we described how induction proceeds by proving something of the first object in an ordered sequence, and then proving that if any object in the ordered sequence has a particular property, then the next one does, and so the first one does, and in virtue of that the next one does. We push the proof out. We push the proof of the property out along the line as far as we care to go, to the end of the line. Well, this is an inductive definition of what it is to be, in our language of propositional logic, a well-formed formula. We're going to say that any sentence letter, any sentence letter, is a well-formed formula. Any sentence letter standing alone, and that's going to be one, and then number two, we're going to say that if alpha, now remember this is of course is not a symbol of our language here, which are limited to these symbols which we've set out up here, we're going to use it in what we call a meta-language to refer to well-formed formula, some well-formed formula in this language. So if alpha is a well-formed formula, a WEF, then parentheses, open parentheses, this mark and whatever that alpha is, and then close parentheses is a well-formed formula. 
And then there's just one more rule for constructing sentences within this language that we're defining, and that is that if alpha and beta are whiffs, then open parentheses alpha arrow beta close parentheses is a woof. And finally we're going to say that nothing is a whiff. No expression is a whiff. No conjunction of any of these symbols of our language. No expression is a whiff unless it can be formed by a finite number which I'm going to abbreviate to that symbol of applications of 1 to 3 above. Now let's take a look, and I'll change color here, let's take a look at certain expressions and determine whether they're whiffs. A, standing alone, is that um, a, a well-formed formula? Indeed it is, in virtue of one. So let's put a little check mark against that, because any sentence letter standing alone is a whiff. So A, insofar as it's a sentence letter, is a whiff. What about this symbol? That is supposed to be that L on its side. Is that a whiff? No, it isn't, because there is no way of forming that by applying only those rules 1 to 3 above. Now, if we were to enclose that in parentheses, would that be a whiff? Well, under those circumstances, it is, because if alpha is a whiff, then that symbol preceding the alpha, all enclosed in parentheses, is a whiff. And in this case, alpha is a whiff because the alpha in our case is the sentence letter A. And by one, uh, that is a whiff itself. So if A is a whiff, which it is, then this is a whiff. So let's put another check mark here. What about the expression? Let's write it here. Open parenthesis. Um, this L on its side symbol, B, arrow, A. Is that a well-formed formula? Well, we have two things here, either side of this arrow, enclosed in parentheses. This is beginning to look like the expression alpha arrow beta. So the question is whether the alpha in our case and the beta in our case are well-formed formulas, whiffs. Well, let's start with the beta. That playing the role of the beta is the sentence letter A, and by one, that is indeed a whiff. So we're, that's, that's good. So far, so good. Alpha, is that? Well, no. It's this L sign B. There is no way to form that by an application of these three rules. Now, if we were to enclose that itself in parentheses, then we would have here, on to the left of the arrow symbol, a well-formed formula in virtue of the fact that B is a, a well-formed formula. And so, open parentheses, L on its side, well form formula close parenthesis by two that is a whiff so that would be a well form formula so let me just repeat that any sentence letter standing alone is a well form formula if we have a well form formula then preceding any well form formula so it might be let me just take a look at this it might be for example 
Let's see. Is that a well-formed formula? Well, yes it is, because this innermost part this innermost part is a well-formed formula in virtue of 3. If that's a well-formed formula, then this is a well-formed formula in virtue of rule 2. And these rules here we are going to call, I'm going to write it over here, formation rules. And these are rules, and they're the only rules that we will have for forming for forming meaningful expressions in our language, our logical language. Thank you.